Hey folks, welcome to episode six of Outdoors uh, podcast slash vlog. And do me a favor, if you're watching this on the vlog and you're new to the vlog, Outdoors, my AJ Outdoors vlog, then hit that subscribe button down below. Okay, it doesn't cost nothing. There's a little notification bell you can click. That'll let you know each time I upload another vlog or if I ever do any live streams on here. Uh, and give it a thumbs up. That really helps the analytics because this channel is really small right now and we're trying to grow it, right? The bigger it gets, the more we can do with it, okay? All right, so, of course, my name's John, as you can see, you know, down below, well, over there uh, at, with a &J Outdoors. And today... We're going to start off with a story, okay? A fishing tale, <laughs> but not a good one. This was a, we, I call this fishing trip a failed trip, right? And it wasn't just uh, a f one little thing that made it a failure. So let's go over what it is. And me and Joel, we're a fishing buddy. If you watch my other channel, which will be linked down below, right? If you watch my other channel, that's where I do my fishing videos and boat repairs and that kind of stuff. Well, me and Joe had planned a trip down to Choke Canyon, one of our local lakes. Uh, they got state park down there. You can rent what's called, I think they call it a shelter. It's a cinder block little room with an AC unit. And this time of year, we bring our own little space heater to keep us warm. And so we had reserved that, right, for Friday. This was two weeks ago, not last week, but the week before. Reserved it for Friday through Sunday. We were going to drive down Friday morning, uh, fish, right, uh, stay the night. Get up in the morning, fish all day Saturday, stay the night, get up in the morning, pack up, and head home on Sunday. Um, we were targeting first white bass because this is the time of year to be down at Choke for white bass. And then we were also uh, had some new intel on potential uh, crappie spots. So we wanted to fish for some crappie. So get to Friday morning. Joel always comes over here. I've got the boat all hooked up and loaded. He shows up here, right? We get his stuff in the boat, in the truck, pull the truck out, let him park, and then we drive and head down there. So we got everything done. We're ready. We're starting to pull out of the driveway. We get a little bit down the road, and all of a sudden, the light, interior lights flash, and my truck makes a beep noise and a click noise like it's locking the doors. And we're like, well, that's odd. And we keep driving. I take my foot off the gas. It doesn't do it again. Come around, turn to the next road. Now it's an uphill road. I got to give it some gas to get up there. And then it does it again and again and again. So imagine you're in the dark in a vehicle and the lights come on and go off and click and beep and come on and go off, click and beep, go on. And so we click quickly we'll realize we get out on the main road, topper wine, heading towards the highway, and it's just constant. So pull over, slam doors, do everything we can think of. I'm looking for fuses that might be affected. Um, and that put the kibosh on the trip. Right, we turn around. We're not going to drive an hour and a half to two hours down there with the truck doing that. So we turn around, pull back to the house. Um, I'm concerned about my truck, of course, uh, and so I want to dig into it that day. So we can't. The trip's canceled. I contact the state park, cancel our reservations. But we decided on Saturday morning, right, the next day, Joel would come over with his truck early. We'd hook the boat to his truck. And just go for a full day fishing. Okay. So that's what we do. And I start doing research now. Backstory on my truck. It's a 08 Dodge Ram Mega Cab. And the back driver's side back door, right? The back door on the driver's side. When you lock it, doesn't lock. You have to physically lock it and then you have to physically unlock it. So the power door lock doesn't work. You use the key fob, it doesn't work, right? Um, so in my mind, I'm thinking, is it something to do with that, right? The vehicle's trying to lock that door even though it's already locked. I don't know. So I started doing my research that day. And so the next morning, Joel shows up. We reload the boat and his truck now, hook them up, and we roll. And everything's fine. We get all the way down there. We're going to Bud's Bait and Tackle, which if you're going to fish choke and you need anything, that's the place to go, right? It's right between... The turn in for south ramp right by the dam on choke canyon and the callahan unit right where, where we were heading so we pull in grab our mineral bucket we go inside the store we're all more pumped right joel gets super excited about this and so do i um and the lady we give her the thing we want three dozen minnows and she kind of looks at us a little bit with a smirk 
and she goes, where are you guys fishing? And we said, the lake. You know, it's right across the street from her, her shop. Duh, of course we're fishing the lake. And then she goes, there's going to be a lot of boats. And I was like, yeah, I noticed when we were driving. I've seen a lot of boats out there. She goes, there's a tournament, over 100 boat tournament. Turns out it was 191 boats in this tournament. And they're launching out of Callahan. <sighs> so here, <laughs> part two of what's going wrong. Never seen any mention of this major regional bass tournament on any social media outlets. And I, I, I even have a Facebook page where you post tournaments and stuff like that. Never seen or heard anything about it. So me and Joe do some talking. Look, we can go down to South Shore Ramp, which is the one we already passed. Um, we could go down to 59 Bridge and fish the Oasis River, which the white bass run that river. And I give Joel the option. He's the one driving, you know, the the truck. And so he goes, let's, let's go ahead and go to Callahan. All right, let's go. So we drive down there, pull in, get up to the gate where you pay, and the Young lady comes out to greet us, and she says, the parking lot is closed. It's it's full. There's 191 boats here. You're not going to be able to put in here. But you can uh, go put in at South Shore. So we're like, well, <laughs> that's the next closest thing for us. And actually, to be honest, South Shore is closer to where we wanted to fish. So we said, okay, we paid our money because it's still a state park, right? paid our money, turned around and started heading to South Shore with the knowledge that everybody who has showed up there or will show up there, she is diverting to South Shore. So now South Shore is going to be a lot more crowded than it usually is. So we get down to South Shore, get the boat lined up on the ramp, get the boat out there. Joel parks the truck, gets on the boat with me. We decide there's an area right near the ramp that we want to check for crappie based on some tail we got. So we go around this corner into a little cove, right? Joe, Joe goes up and deploys the trolling motor for me. I've got a motor guide XI-5 uh, with that hand remote control, and I can anchor lock. That's why I have it. I mean, you can just pull up over a, a structure or whatever you want to fish and hit anchor lock and stay in that area, right? So he deploys the trolling motor, and that was our game panel for this whole fishing trip, right? And the trolling motor doesn't come on nothing there's no power at the trolling motor or the trolling motor is bad so now we're like okay so one my truck goes down two there's a massive tournament that we didn't know about uh causing a lot of traffic on the lake three now the trolling motor's not working which was our sole game plan for how we were going to fish this day whether it was crappie or whites because what we were doing is fishing the main lake the humps that's where you'll find some uh, white bass often uh but again it's one of those things Drop in a regular anchor, you're not going to stay in place, right? So you use that troll motor anchor lock, and you can stay over the crappie or the white bass. So we're like, okay, there's barely any wind. Let's just pull up. We found some brush piles, marked them, saw that there should be some fish on them. So pull, you know, in a direction over those where if we drift, we can kind of drift them. And we tried that for the first, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. Never even got a bite. It was... Even though there wasn't much wind, we were drifting pretty quick, right? And since it was a variable wind, it was kind of shifting directions on us. So one time we would drift this way. So we'd try to set up that drift, and all of a sudden we'd drift a different way. So very frustrating. So we're, after a little bit, I said, Joel, you want to just go see if we can get on those humps and find white bass? There's four or five humps out there in that area. And, and we're like, yeah, let's see if we can get some white bass. Maybe we can drift over them, right? So we pull out there. We see boat over a hump, boat over the next hump, boat over the next hump. There's only like one or two other uh, humps that aren't quite as significant as those ones. That's why those boats were on them, because uh, they were white bass fishing too. Meanwhile, all the bass boats are racing all around us for that tournament. So we find the hump that they're not on. We, we do mark a few fish, but nothing like you would expect your screen to look for a, a group of white bass. But we do some drifts on these humps. And then one boat moves away from a good hunt. So we go over, you know, they got the fish. We, but we drift over it. Joel ends up getting a fish, right? And we're all excited. Hey, maybe it's on. Maybe our luck's turning around. And he pulls up a small uh, blue cat that he had snagged by the tail. <laughs> so we throw that guy back. And we, hey, it's a fish. We're not skunked. We do another drift. Joel gets hit up 
again, I missed a couple of bites during this too. But we're not seeing the fish, so we know it's not going to be good fishing. But Joel Kit hits, reels it in, and it's a small gasper goo or freshwater drum, whichever you like to call them. Uh, and that was that. We did a few more drifts on different humps in the area. We just couldn't hook up with any fish. We spent the better part of the day there. Then we went back into the area that we originally started where those brush piles were. And we said, screw it. We got a little bit steadier wind now. We're going to try to park above these brush piles in the wind direction the wind's coming from. Drop anchor and let it drift us back over these brush piles. That was about the only thing. But it was still variable. So the boat was still doing this sway back and forth type thing. Okay. So, and then there's a lot more boats in there. And a lot of them are bass fishermen, but some of them are crappy fishermen. And it's getting a little crowded. I don't want to push my way into stuff like that. But we finally find a spot and anchor up. Didn't catch anything. Not another bite. Basically, that was the end of our fishing trip. We just, after that, it was done. Okay. So, but we spent most of the day there. I think we were there till like two o'clock in the afternoon. And we got there, you know, like seven in the morning. So, spent the whole day. So, before we left, we're sitting on anchor in that cove that I talked about. A boat comes in, a, a metal John boat type boat, right? Comes in, got four or five people on it goes over to just to the right of us and where the dam is. And there's some buoy markers for the dam, right? And they get near one of those. They use their troll motor to anchor lock like we wanted to, drop a couple lines down, and boom, here comes a nice slab crop. Moments later, boom, here comes another nice slab crop. Now, the fishermen are catching them, but I'm looking at them. You know, we're looking at them like this. We don't want them to know that we know where they are catching those crappie, but they know. And so the boat captain brings up Trollmore, fires up the boat, and moves on. So I think they were kind of like, hey, this is one of our good spots. We don't want all these, all the other fishing boats there were basically bass fishermen, but they didn't know that probably. So, but yeah, so the only thing that good that came from that weekend is we know an area where we might find some crappie. So what went wrong? Well, Got home from that trip, started doing some research on online, uh, posted some information about my problem on my Facebook page just to vent. Um, my niece's husband in Albuquerque is a mechanic, right? And so he hit me up in a messenger. Hey, I had the same thing happen to my truck. It's this wiring harness in the door, la, 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 la. Meanwhile, when I'm looking at YouTube, I'm seeing there's a little where the wires go through a protective sleeve from the B pillar into the door, right? That's what's always moving when you open and shut, close the door. Well, apparently it gets metal fatigue and gets hard. So I got in there and pulled that back and looked, and out of like, I think there's 10 or 11 wires going through there, six of them were busted. I'm like, well, that's got to be my issue. So I get online, I order a new wiring harness, and I tear the door apart so that when the wiring harness gets in, I can go to work on it, which I have since fixed it, and everything works fine now. So it was that wiring harness. Anywho, so that was one issue that I fixed. The next one, the trolling motor, right? The trolling motor, I'm like, I can't believe it's not working, right? It's a new trolling motor. I had it less than a year, I think, and I even I have a quick disconnect, so I take it off and keep it in the garage so it doesn't sit out there in bad weather or nothing. I kind of baby it now. Um, so I'm checking the fuses and when we were out on the water, I checked the fuses on the batteries, right? The charging batteries, 24 volt, two batteries, center console, pop all the fuses, but those fuses are really just to the charger and they were all good. So that's all good. So when I got home, I plugged the charger in to see, Hey, maybe these batteries are bad. Nope. Start flashing yellow saying it's charging. And within hours, they're both green charged, fully charged. So it wasn't the batteries. So... Then I checked, there's that uh, fuse, major fuse, the, the power line going from the batteries up to the trolling motor has an inline uh, breaker or fuse. This is non-resettable. If it goes, you replace it. But anyways, I've got my little test light and I'm checking and I got power there. Okay, I go up to the plug-in for the trolling motor and I can't, I can't detect power there. So I'm like, okay, I, I, it's either, so it's between the batteries and that plug. Right, and I, get, I have a good idea what it is. I take that plug, I of course disconnect the battery so I don't electrocute myself. I take that plug that's on the boat, I pull it out the receptacle, right? And the two 
the ground and power wire are just hanging there. They're not attached to it anymore. Um, I've never liked how that thing was set up. And so um, I did get it back together. It works. I'm going fishing tomorrow, which tomorrow will be Friday. Um, but, and I'm going to use it, right? It works, but I don't like it. So I'm going to replace that. This is a boat I'm going to be selling in the next couple months. I don't want to sell it with something like that going on. So I'm going to replace that plug system with a newer one uh, that hopefully gives us no issues. Um, so lesson learned on that. One lesson learned is I even ran the big motor on the must just to make sure everything was copacetic with the motor. I never hooked up the trolling motor and engaged it and just to make sure that it works. So my little checklist that I do of things before I go on a fishing trip, make sure these things are right. You know, the lights, the tire pressures. Now the troll motor is on that checklist where I got to make sure I'm deploy it and it runs before I ever leave the house. Okay. So that was my fishing fail in a nutshell. And it was, you know, 80% fail, 20% success. And I say that 20% success because we did find an area we have not found crappie on that lake other than fishing from the bank Joel did a while back um, but now we know an area where we can potentially catch crappie so we're excited about that so partial fail mostly fail but partial success all right I like to be positive remember I said that in one of my previous episodes all right so that's a fishing story if you guys have any if you're on the vlog here and you have any crazy fishing stories like that uh, or if you want to make fun of me for it uh, just go ahead and comment down below. I read all the comments. I respond to all of them. All right. So that's the fishing story. <laughs> now, news, right? I like to do a segment on uh, outdoor news. Okay. Today's segment, I'm following up on a follow-up of a no news story. So I think it was two or three episodes ago, I told you guys about the new speckled trout uh what they wanted to do to change and protect the speckled trout better because we had that big freeze last february that killed off a lot of the trout and basically from the jfk causeway south through uh laguna madre and all that area um they changed the limit i mean you could keep from five to three and they changed the size from uh 15 to 25 with one over to 17 to 23 with no over, right? That was a temporary fix to try to help get the, the back. So now they've done research since then. They put together a proposal. They wanted to uh, change it to, again, because so, that in September of 2021, that change went away because they make these things effective for only so long, and then they disappear. Right? It's for the season, right? So the season is August through. So... September, that went away. So it went back to the 15 to 25, one over, keep five. The proposal that they started a couple months ago, they wanted to change it, right, to back to 17 to 23 with no over and only three fish possession. But they also wanted to change the geography of it. In other words, when I said south of the JFK Causeway, right, down to Laguna Madre, basically down to the end of North Padre Island down there, right? Now they're moving the upper barrier north to include all of Matagorda, right? So that's a much bigger area. They had, like I said in my previous reports, that they had uh, time for public comment and this, this, and that. That all happened. January 27th, they are having their big meeting to uh, put forward the proposal. The proposal did not change. That is the proposal. But, and it will expire, right, in September or the end of August, August 31st of 2023. So it's the proposal for 2022. But I cannot find anywhere where they actually enacted it yet, right? So they had their meeting. They proposed, this is what we want to do. But I never found. So if you go and look on the website or if you go and look in their app, if you have it on your phone, which you should, Texas Parks and Wildlife app, if you're here in Texas, um, it's still uh, keep five, 15 to 25 with one over. So they haven't officially enacted it, I guess. And I keep digging on their website to find somewhere where they're going to, and there's no, so I emailed them and I asked them, hey, 
I understand this is coming, but when is it effective? So that's what we're waiting for. So again, next week's uh, vlog, I'll probably update you all on that again, because that is a big story for us here along our coastline. Okay. All right. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think down below. I know a lot of people who watch are here in the Texas area. Even if you're not in Texas, wherever you are, let me know what you think of, of those new rules. All right. So next, we're going to talk a, a new thing that I'm adding, and it's Gadget Corner, or Gadget Corner. Yeah, that probably sucked, right? I can edit that out if I have to. Anyways, let's go to Gadget Corner. Or Gadget Corner. All right, so Gadget Corner is where if I have something I think is pretty cool and I want to share with you, fishing, hunting related, outdoor related gadgets, that's this is where I'm going to do it. Uh, so I have something. If you were on our live stream, the, the Outdoors Crew Tuesday Live a couple weeks ago, you might have seen this already. But my wife, one of my Christmas presents, she ordered this for me, right? And that's uh, Toadfish, right? That's the brand. And I've seen them all over now, but I just hadn't gotten anything from them yet. So what do we got? Well, if you look in the front here, there's a little pouch. I'm going to pull this out. Boom. We got a knife, right? A folding blade, locking blade, fillet knife, okay? It's even got a little clip here where I guess you could hang it from something if you have it on your boat with you or whatever, right? I've got a lot of good fillet knives. Well, I have a lot of fillet knives, a few good ones, right? So was I really like, oh, I need a new fillet knife? No. So this wasn't the reason she got for me, though I am liking this, okay? And I will, I'll put a link uh, down below where you can get this whole thing if you want it at Amazon, okay? But the thing that really liked is not every place I fish has a cleaning station, right? If you're on the beach on, uh, let's say, National Seashore, you're down the beach, there's no cleaning station there. You could go up by Packery and use theirs or wherever you're staying. Maybe they have one if you're lucky. If not, there isn't. But if you want clean fish right there on the beach, right, so that you can cook them up while you're fishing, which is always awesome to do, uh, you need a way to do it. So I would steal one of my wife's kitchen cutting boards. And then on the tailgate, I'd set that kitchen cutting board and I'd go to work. Well, what else is inside this big old ginormous it's not ginormous, but you can see it's more than just a knife holder, is a cutting board, okay? Now, what's unique about it is, well, as you can see, it's folded up, right? So you lay it out, and you got a cutting board no matter where you go. When you close it on the back side here, those black, these are magnets, right? And so it, doop, doop, it's magnetized to close up. And I don't know if this is gimmicky or not yet because I haven't used it. But you can see knife sharpeners, right? So this has really got me excited because anytime I'm going down the coast to, to fish, right, uh, on, the, on the beach, this is going with me. And I can whip this out, put it on the tailgate, and go to town on some fish. Also, uh, one area lake that I like to fish, though I don't do real well there, is, oh, sorry about that, Canyon Lake. And Canyon Lake does not have a fish cleaning station near any of the ramps, right? So you either wing it on your tailgate or you brought them home and then clean them at home. And most people don't like to do that depending on where you live, right? So that is the gadget for Gadget Corner. I like it. Uh, I can't wait to actually put it to use, but I, I don't see anything that could go wrong with it other than me cutting myself with a very sharp knife. Uh, so if, you, if you're interested, you want to take a look at it further, uh, there will be an Amazon link down below. Just understand any of those links down below uh, for products or anything like this are affiliate links. That means if you click on it and you go there and you buy it, for every one of these you buy, I probably get a penny or two. Okay, So I'm not getting rich. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase that. that way. It's just like if you went on Amazon and found it on your own. Uh, it's just I don't get that little kick back. So there you go, Gadget Corner. Let me know down below if you guys like Gadget Corner. And if there's anything you've seen me using and you're like, I'd like to know more about whatever that is, 
right? We can make, we can take this thing out to the boat. We can take it out to the grills in the backyard. We don't have to be right here in my makeshift office slash studio. Okay. All right. So that's gadget corner. Okay. I want to introduce you guys. If you're not familiar with it, we have uh, an, a live stream every Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Central, uh, called the Tuesday afternoon, even though it's evening to me, Tuesday afternoon live, right? And the hosts are the outdoors crew. Well, who's the outdoors crew? The outdoors crew is myself, Mr. Stanley Orford, who's down near the Texas coast in Beeville area, uh, and Mr. Grant McIntosh, who is in Southern Illinois, right? So every Tuesday, one of us hosts it, and the other two are on panel with them, and we rotate it. We also lately have having special guests join us, right? So if you want to check that out, right, I got a website you can go to, and you can find information there. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the website. All right, so when you first go to the website, that's what you see, right? It has Tuesday afternoon live, the outdoors crew, that's our thumbnail. Uh, there's a home button over here. You see a &J Outdoors, Stanley Orchard, Grant McIntosh. Click, we each have a page, a sub page, right? Click on that and you go to that page. If you scroll down, right, there you are. Join us each Tuesday evening, 6 p.m., da 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 want to be a guest click here you click right there and what that'll do is open up your email and you can send me a direct email saying hey i'd like to be a guest on your live stream and that's how you do it that's how you get on okay below that is our most recent live stream right so there's stanley orchard myself there's grant and this is a gentleman from the small water uh charters they're in florida him and his wife i thought they're crappie charters because they're their YouTube channel lately, they've been crappie videos, but they're bass charter, right? You want to go down there and catch some ginormous bass. They're in the Okeechobee area, right? Hook up with them. So here you could click the little red arrow and watch that video. And in that video, in the description below is information on how to get a hold of them. Okay. Scroll down further. Here's where it introduces you to each of us, right? You click on this, you go to my page, Stanley's page, Grant's page, right? Let's pop into my page real quick. Boop. All right, there's some uh, artistry for you. And then it, you've got uh, my YouTube channel, vlog channel. This is the channel you're on right now watching this. Uh, my Facebook page, the ANJ Outdoors Facebook page. Twitter, merch, if you want to get an ANJ Outdoors shirt or something like that, that's the place to do it. And then my Instagram link. Follow me on all of those, right? You click on it, it'll take you right to it. It'll show you my latest video, right? Anytime I do a video, it's going to go right here, right? For my main channel. This is not for the vlog. This is for the main channel. So my last video I did, I bled the hydraulic steering system on my boat, which was another issue in that last fishing trip that I forgot to talk about, okay? Some pictures you can scroll through. Some Most of these are just old thumbnails. My latest podcast, if you want to just listen to it instead of seeing the vlog or my latest vlog. So by the time you see this, this vlog will be posted right there. And you can just click on it and go watch it. And if you want to email me, click on that. On the so again, Tuesday evenings, right, 6 p.m. Central Time. It's not limited to Texas, right? Grant's in, in uh, Southern Illinois. We have uh, one of our originals, Steve Ash, Hall and Ash, is up in Michigan. And he still comes back and joins us once in a while, right? So... Check it out. You see up here, you can see the address. Well, you can't see it on your screen. But address is Outdoors Live Crew. One word, OutdoorsLiveCrew.com. That's it, OutdoorsLiveCrew.com. Check it out. If you're here on the vlog, of course, I'll have a link to it down below. You can go check it out and uh, see what it's all about. All right. So let's get off of that. Okay. All right, so get this camera to focus on me again. Actually, it's probably better if, it's, if I'm not in focus. So tomorrow I'm going fishing. Hopefully it's a solo trip, Calaveras Lake, my local lake. Uh, we'll talk about it next week's vlog if anything happens. And there might be a video or two from it. All right, folks, so that concludes this week's vlog. A little shorter than the last ones. Again, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It costs nothing. 
hit the notification bell and let you know when I update or upload a new video. And give it a thumbs up. All that helps the YouTube analytics, which will help grow the channel, which will get the vlogs out in front of more people, which in turn helps grow the channel. I get no, uh, it's not monetized. The channel's not big enough to get anything out of it. So it's just, I'm just doing it because I enjoy it. Thank you for joining me. I hope I see you or you see me next week here. If you got anything you want me to talk about, any kind of special guests you think I should get on board, put it all in the comments below. I read them all. All right, folks, Till next week, thank you, and peace out.